broadly speaking, I, I wrote to the uh, local health management uh, a couple of weeks ago saying, look, I'm really worried about some of the uh, some of the question marks you've been putting over the future of Western Hospital's maternity unit. And I told local residents that I'd done that, told local people that that, that letter had been sent off, put it on my Facebook page, and the response was absolutely astounding from local mums and dads who uh, took the trouble to, to, to look it up and post on my Facebook page and say, look, we, we agree, we are Many of us would have liked to have had our babies at the Western Maternity Unit, but we didn't think we could, and we were advised to go to Bristol. Um, and we'd far rather have been able to have our, our babies at Western in the maternity unit there. And, and wouldn't it be great if other people in future weren't faced with the same sort of choice and, and were able to have their children um, locally rather than having to trek up to Bristol to do it? So absolutely amazing set of responses. And what I've been able to do is to take those case studies, effectively, those individual examples, and package them all together and send them off to the local health managers who are uh, looking at the future of Western maternity to say, look, there is a huge demand, a huge enthusiasm for expanding or at least consolidating uh, the Western maternity unit. If we can possibly make the numbers add up, there's an awful lot of people in Western who would love to be able to use the, the unit in future. Do you think it will make any difference um, generally, I mean, given what's happened with the A&E and the overnight closure, which is set to continue? Uh, well, Bear in mind, the overnight closure um, is still temporary. We just we, they've, they've committed in principle to getting the thing reopened. It's a question of when, not if. Um, and my experience so far of, of the, the health managers is that they are driven by facts and evidence. They, they, you know, medicine is a science, and so is me- managing medicine, if I can put it that way. Um, and so, yes, if we send them evidence, then they will pay attention to that. Now, the question is whether or not um, it's, a, it's strong enough and whether or not the you know, the business case, the numbers, the dry, boring, but necessary spreadsheets and accountancy can be made to work as well. But at least we're making the strongest case we possibly can. Um, and, you know, local people's voices will be properly heard. Are you confident that uh, more buzz will happen at Western then? The point which I'm, I'm trying to get across is that there are a huge number of births that should and could be happening at Western, but aren't at the moment. Um, and it's a question of making sure that the the Western unit has the facilities so that parents are reassured that if something were to be a bit more complicated than, than a completely standard birth, that if they're having their baby in Western, that the Western unit can cope so they don't have to um, get shuttled up to Bristol uh, in an ambulance if, the, if, the, if it's needed. So that's the reassurance that um, local parents would need. And the question which we all need to get the health chiefs to answer is, can this be done in an economic way so that birth cannot just carry on in Western, but perhaps even a few more births might happen in Western because there's plenty of people who would love to be able to take up that opportunity and if it can be provided. And in your letter, you mentioned about um, fully equipping the centres just a few miles apart. Do you think that's sort of the problem or could that be part of the solution in some ways? Well, that, that's the question which I'm asking, which is, you know, are you and I and your listeners as taxpayers um, getting the maximum amount of health for the money, the taxpayers' money that's being spent on it locally, because we've got two fully equipped, very impressive birth units up in the two Bristol teaching hospitals, um, and they're only a few miles apart. And then there's this small um, unit down in Western, which is miles away, which has many fewer facilities and would be a great deal cheaper uh, to, to, to equip than, than, a, than an expensive and crowded teaching hospital site up in Bristol. So I'm asking, you know, is this something that's been looked at? Have you looked at whether or not the, the, some of those facilities could be provided perhaps cheaper and more conveniently, but just as effectively down in Western? Or is this just some accident of history that it's all up in Bristol? Um, and it does seem a bit weird to have both the two fully equipped centres just a couple of miles apart, um, when, when you know, the, the, which means that everybody has to travel to the medicine rather than the medicine being available near where the patients are. Well, the only other question I think which, I, well, which I, I know I'm asking and I think a number of other people are asking too is whether or not, it is, whether or not it's fair to expect uh, expectant mums in Western and the villages around it to travel so much further up to Bristol to have their babies when if you are an expectant mum in North Bristol or South Gloucestershire, you've got two, not just one, but two fully equipped birth units pretty much on your doorstep. So that seems like um, it's a... It's a, it's a probably unintentional, but it does seem like it's a bit unfair to expect people in our neck of the woods to have to travel so much further for what should be a perfectly natural, perfectly normal, um, perfectly routine process in most cases, which is giving birth.